family, his children, speaking of children, his brother and his children were getting just verbally harassed, which is a hate crime, but he was getting harassed by this white supremacist. I don't know if the person was homeless. I don't know what the deal was, the status of this white supremacist, but this white supremacist kept referring to this man's children, the black man, kept referring to him as the N-word. So the brother did what a father would do. He socked him. He socked this white supremacist, but he ended up socking him for good and, you know, fatally knocked him out. And the judge was like, well, you should have called the police. See, they play that you should have called the police game on us. See, this is why family... A crime bill is very important. This is why they don't want to give it to us, because we will have a legal precedent to enforce a crime bill. If somebody's sitting up here yelling the N-word, that is designated as them committing a crime. You have a, a legal obligation, and I won't say obligation, but you have a legal standing to protect yourself from a designated crime. If somebody's committing a hate crime, you have a, a legal standing to say, hey, I'm defending myself from this crime. That's why they're so hell-bent on not giving us that anti-black hate crime bill. This is why we really got to step on that. We really got to push for that heavy. Because when black folks, and we've seen this in New York, a black person says something that an Asian person don't like, that black person is walking around in handcuffs. They immediately arrest that black person. We saw that with the whole stop Asian hate thing where black folks were getting into verbal altercations with Asian people and black folks were getting arrested. All of that free speech and all of that stuff, no. They made it a hate crime. If they, The Asian community, they have a hate crime. Stop Asian hate. See, look at the way wording is with the Asian community. They were very specific about what was going on. You stop, stop what? Hate known Asians. So that's a, a demand. And then they gave a consequence to the demand. If you don't stop hating known Asians, you're going to get these handcuffs on you. See, what, what they created for us was Black Lives Matter. That's not a command. That that doesn't really say anything. And remember, the whole Black Lives Matter, the, the slogan and everything, that came from the left, from the DNC. That was almost controlled opposition to a certain degree. They said, Black Lives Matter. Okay, and what should we do about the Black Lives that Matter? Are you going to protect them? You see, it's, it's a very vague thing. Black Lives Matter is very vague. It doesn't really say anything. Stop Asian hate. That's very, very direct. Stop hating on Asians. Don't do a hate crime against an Asian person. Stop Asian hate. See, I think it should have been stop anti-black hate. It's very important that we get an anti-black hate crime going on. Extremely important. What's up all these beautiful people in here? I see a lot of new faces in here. Let's get some of these new folks in here because we got a lot of people in here tonight. Let's get, um, what's your name? D, D, oh, I can't pronounce your name. It starts with a D. What's your name, bro? Yeah, what's going on, bro? What's up, man? What, how to pronounce your name? It's called Diavion. Diavion? Yes, sir. How old was your mama when she had you? 17? Yeah, she was young. Yeah, I can tell. That's one of them young teen mother names. You got any siblings? Yeah, I got a, uh, I got some three sisters, four brothers. Oh, okay. Um, now what city you live in? Atlanta? No, nah, Columbia, South Carolina. Oh, there you go. But not too far. So what's, now how old are you now, brother? I'm, uh, I'm about to be uh, 23. Okay, you're a young dude. Man, so what's on your mind, brother? I would just wanted to ask you, like, what is, what's your opinion on, like, guys, like, that are drifters? Like, guys who say things that they really don't mean, but just for, like, some money or to get some type of shock value. Like, what's your whole opinion on that? The Internet is full of that. 
Yeah, that's called the internet. The internet is full of people who just say and do things in order to get clicks and hits. There's a dude now from Alabama. This dude does a whole bunch of stuff. He like sets. He's a rapper, and he does did a video clearly setting up a fake robbery. And then he does another video. He's a short dude, and he has a tall girlfriend. And they put out that he's 16 and she's 26, which is he's like in his 20s too. So little shit like that. People just do stuff and say stuff just to be provocative to get hits and clicks on the internet. That's what that's the, the age we're in right now. We're in this age that people ain't got to go out here in these streets and deal with the consequences of just saying bullshit you see that's the problem we live in an internet age back in the day you just couldn't say stuff and then get get back on them bricks there would be consequences if you said something that was incorrect or you were not right and exact there are no consequences now people can say any damn thing yeah cool that makes sense yeah definitely my man all right brother you be good brother yes sir appreciate you yeah. Yeah, the internet is so... It, it, it's a gift and a curse. It's a gift and a curse. Um, people just say anything. There's no consequences. Um, the, the internet has given rise to fuckboys majorly. And the internet has given platforms to dudes who are straight up busters who couldn't survive, who would not be able to have survived on the streets at all. See, I'm a Gen X man. I'm a Gen Xer. We had to go outside. We were forced to go outside. Nobody back in those days, in the Gen X days, we couldn't just be posted up in your house. We had parents and grandparents that would make you get your ass up and go outside going outside and if somebody's messing with you you better get down you better get out there and put them things up you weren't allowed to be a buster you understand you were not allowed to be a buster that just didn't happen you had to go out there and put them things out there and and swoop down on niggas and defend yourself and and be a man about yours be a woman about yours you had to represent you had to be um, thorough about how you carried yourself. Your mouthpiece had to be crisp. You had to just stand on yours, stand on for real business. You ain't got to do that now. And the internet has created a safe haven for busters. So there's a gift and a curse. It's a great thing. You know, I'm not throwing the internet out totally. We're on the internet now. It's a great thing for networking and getting stuff done. But there's good and bad that comes with it. All right. Let's get um I raw. I can't pronounce your name. I can't pronounce your name. But we'll, go ahead, brother. Raw something. I hope I'm pronouncing that part right. Um, Hello? What's going on, man? Hey, right, what's going on, man? I'm the raw variant, man. I'm from Palm Beach, Florida. Oh, there it is, man. What's on your mind? I'm cool, man. No, I was just like going with what you just said, like, because even though I'm like 39 years old, I remember like, even, even, even still when we were first to go outside, you want to go outside anyway, because right. we lived in the age where we like to interact with people like face to face, like a lot of stuff happened back then when it, it's different from getting on the internet and trying to put something together whereas you word of mouth and then you meeting up with people that's the way how we used to vet people too yeah because ain't nobody just just some surprise on some invite nah you had to know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody and right. if you showed up with a square you feel me somebody gonna say hey who brought this square around here right you know what i mean right so, yeah somebody had to vouch for you back in the day somebody had to you you come in they're like whose man is this you know, somebody Who's your man? To... Whose man is this? Right, right. <laughs> somebody would have yeah. to vouch for cats. So now Yo, they, dudes just be showing up. You don't know where they came from. That's why I talk about the whole going back to Black Lives Matter. Those protests that started back in 2000, really 2013, 
we start going to these protests around the country and we notice all these weirdos that nobody knew. We would go to these protests to, to get ready to stand up to these damn white supremacists. Then we saw these weird forehead, janky hairline having niggas standing around here twerking and doing all types of weird stuff. We're like, who's, who man is that? Who, who's, where that shit come from? Who are these septum ring ass chicks hanging around? Where are all these weird people out here? Who are these people? Then all of a sudden these weirdos, they start getting all in front of the camera and then the media starts saying, these are the leaders. So what? what? Don't nobody know these folks. These folks come out of nowhere, don't nobody know them. And then the media starts following the weirdos around. We saw that in real time. We saw that happening right around the Mike Brown situation. You dig? And some of the real stomped down activists going back to the Mike Brown situation. A lot of those brothers and sisters, they were getting offed. They were mysteriously getting knocked off left and right. And all of the weirdos were being elevated. So it's very interesting dynamics out here, man. Let's get um Saint Michael. Let's get Saint Michael in the building. Mr. Saint Michael in the building. Tariq, can you hear me? I can hear you, sir. What's going on, brother? Not much, not much. I've been trying to get a hold of you because so I watched this YouTuber, right? His name is Amazing Lucas. I don't know if you heard of him. But uh he been to, he been he been talking a lot of stuff about you, you know. Um and I and I called into his little thing because he don't necessarily say your name, but he, he he does a lot of talking around. And so I called in and I was like, you know, you know, I, you clearly got a, lo a lot of opinions about Tariq. I think, you you know, <clears throat> go ahead and say something to him directly. But the point that I'm trying to get to is he's trying to, like, poison the well when it comes to the information you've given out, because it's clear that he listens to you just based off of the stuff he be saying. Like, like I said, he doesn't say your name directly, but he uses a lot of your talking points. And so I just want everybody just to be aware that there's people out there trying to poison the well and we just can't let things like that happen. So that's just all I wanted to say. Yeah, yeah, that, you, that's uh, cats like that. You ain't really got to mention them. You know, that's that's giving them dry promotion to a certain degree. That's kind of dry promoting. There's dozens of people who make YouTube videos about me. Dozens of them. It's called clout chasing. Duh. Yeah, dudes make videos about me in order to get clicks. That's nothing new. That's nothing we promote. And I don't give a shit. You know, these are the, you know, look, my, look, listen, look, look, I'm a Gen Xer. Y'all don't, if you got something to say to me, if you didn't say it to me in person, it don't matter. That's my joint, man. If you can't say it to me in person, it don't matter. You do, I don't do that internet thing. Cats gotta, you gotta see me if you got a real problem. It ain't no, it's cloud chasing. Let them cloud chase. All right. It's, it's like these dudes are the new basketball wives. That's what basketball wives is. It's a show where women clout chase off dudes. You got dudes who try to clout chase off other men. I don't do that. That's a, again, that's new nigga shit. And, you know, you, you got a lot of soy milk dudes out here who do that. Dudes who sit up here and whine about men all day. There's a lot of soy in the diets out here. It's a whole different generation. A lot of feminized, sassy dudes out here who keep another man's name in their mouth. Whining about dudes. Yeah. Let me get some more calls in here. Uh, let's get Trey. Let's get Trey in here. Like right, Trey, hop in, man. Unmute your microphone, Trey. Yo, Trey. Hey, how you doing, brother? I'm good, Trey. How are you, brother? I am all right. I didn't think you was gonna get me up, but I was really just calling to talk that shit because uh. You ain't had no Sunday broadcast on, and I drive, so I'll be needing that stuff at the nighttime, my boy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to do my main broadcast tomorrow. I was with the family today, so I didn't get a chance to do it. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. Heem. Let's get Heem in here. Heem. Can you hear me, Tariq? 
What's up, Heem? I hear you. I'm doing pretty good. I'm just a uh, a young African Haitian brother from uh, Tallahassee, Florida. You're an African, You're an African Haitian? Haitian? Well, yeah, I'm a quarter Haitian, quarter Bahamian, and then half uh, Liberian. Oh, okay. Well, oh, you all over the place, all boy. All yeah. Place. yeah, yeah. Well, you, right. got Jolof, you got Joe Loff, you got Goosey Soup. You got everything going. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's funny. My dad's Mandingo. I don't know if you heard of the Mandingo tribe. but Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard about him. Yeah. Oh, Last oh, name, Tori. I don't know if you know of uh, anybody man. out there named Tori. But... Now, have you been yeah, back, to been Liberia, back to Liberia or Haiti or, or Haiti any of these places? I have not. I've been trying to go back to Haiti. My mom's like, eh. It's too rough over there, and then um, my dad, he died a few years ago, so Sorry to hear that. I'm trying to go back to Liberia, but I know for sure they got a civil war or something going on where I'm from, typical of Liberia, but... Yeah, my, 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 yeah, my guy, um, guy, um, <laughs> um, what's his name from No Jumper, no Jumper. is from Liberia. Liberia. I think Flaco. I know who you're talking Flaco. about. Flacco, my brother Flacco. Yeah, and you can recognize, you know, with the hairline and all these <laughs> different... <laughs> No, but Man. I wanted to bring something up. So I was with my, I, I was able to get together with the FBA sister last year for the first time ever. You know what I'm saying? I was born in America, but you know she said something that was just so fun. We broke up over some dumb stuff, but we met on Tinder, and she was able to tell I wasn't American. Like I was born in America, but apparently I just don't look. <laughs> Black y'all listen, we, listen, y'all, we, we know, man. <laughs> We be knowing. Y'all are not fooling nobody. Y'all think, oh, I was born here, nigga. No, we know. We know. Yeah, I, just because I really wish y'all understand that we be knowing. But go ahead. <laughs> you know, she could tell just because, you know, my hair was, it's not like I have a crazy hairline, but, you know, I had that African wolf going on, you know. I'm know telling the hairline, the hairline, the hairline and the forehead gives it away every time. Though. Every yeah, time. Nah, every it was cool. Great experience though with the FBA sister. I mean, I'll, I'll say that. I'm, now, now, I what did she say? How did how did she how did she, how did she how recognize did she that you were not FBA? FBA? She was just like, I can just tell by the way you ain't take care of your hair. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was it was easy like that. She could just see from a picture because that's one because thing. That's FBA, one thing. FBA, FBA, the FBA, FBA man. man. We gonna have we the hair have looking the hair. fine. That's one thing that's, we gonna do. You understand? You understand? Yeah. And when we were together, you know, I had long hair. She twisted me up, and she would always be like, "Hey, take care of your hair. Make sure you're wearing a do rag." I just did not give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> dead giveaway, <laughs> my man. Thank yeah, you so much. I'm having some yeah. feedback problems. Yeah, the feedback was real bad, but family, F- listen, the non FBA cats, we we can tell. We can tell. The hair is always the dead giveaway. Y'all, I don't. Y'all be thinking y'all blending in, because here's the thing. Listen, FBA brothers generally, we are gonna have a fresh damn cut. That's one thing. We are gonna go get a fresh cut. That's that's part of our culture. Having a fresh ass cut. That's a part of FBA culture. So when we see somebody who ain't got a fresh cut and they're walking around. You see, here's the thing about the haircut thing. This is the thing. Sometimes you might have a bad hair day. Sometimes you might be in need of a cut. But the thing is, you kind of put your hat on, you put a hoodie on, you kind of dress. You dress like you're cut. So if you need a haircut, we really don't dress too fly if our hair ain't really cut like it's supposed to be. Women too. Women, if your hair ain't really done, you ain't really trying to dress all fly. Let me tell you, I'm, let, I'm, I'm going to give you all some secrets how we can tell. FBA men and women, if our hair ain't really done, we don't like to dress up too much. We we like to wait. <laughs> you know, we, we waiting on that appointment to come through and before we get dipped. When we see somebody with a crooked wig and you dressed up like Oprah Winfrey or some shit, like, where are you from? <laughs> yeah. uh, when we see somebody with peppercorn edges and a janky hairline and he's in a three-piece suit brother where you from you understand we ain't putting on no three-piece suit and the hairline ain't crisp and the joint ain't faded like it's supposed to be we're not going to do that i'm telling you that's a dead giveaway we see somebody who's somewhat well dressed and your hair is looking a beast women too women you dress real nice but your hair looks like tumbleweeds we're like okay where, where are you from so that's a giveaway right there. Uh, is this Devin's ass? Oh. Okay. 
I wonder if this Devin, he's giving the thumbs down. Okay, we got a an angry tether in here, giving a lot of thumbs down. What's going on, man? Why are you giving all the thumbs down? Is that Devin in here? De-educate, hop on. Okay, listen, listen. Okay. Uh, first of all, this guy, this guy was not an FBA. This guy was not, hey, this guy was not, a, this guy was an FBA. I want to tell you this first. Uh, Look, look at look at look at my woman. Look at what my woman. Man. Look, look at my look at look look at my woman. Oh God, you tethers! Well, you don't have anything to say. You don't have anything to say. You just wanted to get up here just to be seen. You don't really have anything to say. You babbling. Sound like you in the bushes trying to hunt for some bush meat. You just saying, shit. y'all. God, y'all tethers are. Worse, man. Y'all don't even think you can speak English that good. You in here speaking damn Ebo. I don't know what you're saying. Oh, hey, hey, look, nigga. Hold, oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, I got a postman order coming through. Dude, deliver your orders. Stop trying to call up with unfunny troll material. All right, let's get this guy. This, I think this is another tether. Yeah. What's going on, man? Hello, question mark, whatever your name is. Yo, Tariq, how you doing, bro? I am good. What's going on with you, ma'am? Yeah. So, yes, I have some questions to ask you real quick. Go so, ahead. Why you never Why you never talk about Jewish people, bro? Why you, you skip will that? Will you person? stop? Will you stop with the musty test? Stop it. You're not a white supremacist. Stop with all these white supremacists talking points. I'm black, but why you why But you you're not keep... a white supremacist. Yeah, stop but... it. Why you skip that question, bro? Why you and never? Why are you skipping deodorant? Why you never talk about that question? You why don't it? you ever talk about your underarms? You're just deflecting right now. Why you don't talk about Jewish supremacists? Why? Oh my God! Listen, Tariq, Tariq, be talking seriously. Stop doing those stuff. Oh my God! Ridiculous people, man. Yeah, it's so what did I see? I'm, I have to stop the music. I'm asking you a question. Okay, I, I don't, I, I don't want to hear musty. Tether. You talk about Jewish supremacists. You talk about white supremacists. They're okay. all the same. Get the hell off here. I'm not trying to hear no deflective tether babble. I don't want to hear that. All right, let's get some people in here. Um, Kay Masterson, uh, I don't know your name. Mr. Masterson, Kay Masterson, hop on. All right, while we're waiting on him, let's get Cash Gains in the building. Cash in the building. Yo, peace, brother Tariq. What's up, man? How are you, sir? Black in America. Hey, yes, just real, yeah, just real quick, I just wanted to, because uh, uh, I'm, I'm a break dancer of 15 years, a b-boy, as well as a filmmaker of the competitions, the underground ones anyway. And now yes. that the Olympics is going viral and stuff, I just, and, you know, shout out to you for microphone check. I yes. put a, a list of black American breakers, both b-boys and b-girls, who still compete to this day, uh, for those who are looking for those to support. So I just wanted to shout them out. Uh, and ask if you could share the link if you get a second. Thank you. Let for, me check uh, it. Space. I'll check it out. Um, now, do you know B-Boy Morris? Yes, sir. From Sacramento, California. I, I, I uh, trained under him. Oh, yeah. Bad. I, I don't know why he wasn't in the, the, the Olympic competition. Um, the, the stuff we saw was mad mediocre on at the Olympics, man. Where are all of our FBA B-Boys, man? Where are all of our hey, three? One more thing, real quick. Uh, yeah. when they first were sharing around a link saying that there's a Zoom you can go through over three days to become an Olympic judge for breakdancing, uh, um, they, there was also a $600, um, I think it was more than that, uh, price tag added to that. And a lot of people were critiquing the fact that the Olympics thinks they can tell us how to judge our shit, but some people was like, put your head down and just go through it. 
I, I was against it at the time, but now I'm looking for that link and I'm gonna make sure I get it to any black American uh, B-boys and OGs still out here uh, uh, breaking uh, uh, so that they can, you know, uh, um, line themselves up and, and get up uh, in the Olympics and, and change from the inside. You see what I'm saying? Yes, indeed. Are they going to have, because I've been hearing mixed stories, the 2028 Olympics that's going to happen in, in L.A., are they still going to have the B-boy competition? Some people said they weren't going to have it out here. Have you heard anything like that? Yeah, I heard that they're not because uh, Los Angeles was a desperate attempt for the Olympics to try to make sure that they'll even have one in 2028 because they're normally like 12 or 16 cities that will apply to even host the Olympics. That number yeah. went down to nine. It went down to five. And then it was just two in 2020 uh, for 2024, Paris and L.A. So they just gave it to both of them desperately. Wow. Like L.A. turned a profit last time it happened in 1984. Uh, um, but I don't think that they're going to feature all these newer uh, competition styles, uh, skateboarding and these other ones. So I think we're going to have to wait until 2032 in Brisbane, Australia, which was just announced. Oh, wow. OK. OK. But yeah, yeah, we need to we need some of these black B-boys, the FBA B-boys to get busy with this thing, man. For real, for real. But thank you so much, brother. OK, let's get um. who else? Who we got up here? Uh, who we got up here? Shout out to my brother B-Boy Morris. I really wanted to see him up there do his thing. Because, yeah, that chick from Australia, oh, man, that was a damn mess. I'm going to talk about that in depth tomorrow on my main broadcast. African Pride. What's up, brother? What's up, Tariq? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. <clears throat> I, I What's just... On your mind? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm just, I was just... I was trying to wrap my head around... Right. Like, how do you justify talking about African and black tethers 95 percent of the time when there's like at least three other groups that harm FBAs more, way more? And you don't like devote any time towards those groups like, like, the, like the well, like the Mexicans, but like specifically in L.A. when they're redistricting, redistricting the area, uh, removing. FBAs economically out of LA. You got the gangs who burn down black churches, who kill black FBAs for going in their territory, spray paint NKs. Uh, there was a Hispanic or a Venezuelan who went on a shooting spree in North Carolina shooting FBAs. And then you got uh, when, when 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 did this happen? Two weeks ago, he shot he shot like ten FBAs. It wasn't barely it barely made the news. Yeah, I haven't heard that. So I haven't heard it. So I haven't talked about it because I haven't heard it. Just like you said, it never meant it didn't make the news. We always talk about what goes on with the Hispanics in L.A. I got a movie talking about some of the lies that certain Hispanics tell. So don't say that bullshit. I go in on anti-black Hispanics all the time. I go in on white supremacists all the time. I go in on anti-black East Indians all the time. And I go in on the tether class all the time. I'm the can man. Everybody can get it. And just because you got a little melanin and a little kink in your hair and you ain't from our lineage, you're not going to be able to do little slick ass stuff. You're going to get it too. Because the tethers who come from Africa and the Caribbean, they're the most insidious ones because they slip right up under us and try to undermine us directly. We see the Hispanics coming. We see the white supremacists coming. But we got cats up under us sitting up here skinning and grinning like we all brothers. And they're behind the scenes trying to cut our damn throats. And we're saying, no, you ain't going to do that. Because yeah, we're we, in no, Syracuse, no, right? But no, no, like, no, no, that's no, not actually happening. You do what now? In theory, you're correct. But that's not actually happening. Or not, not happening. In the you mean it's not happening? It is happening. What, how are you telling us our experiences aren't what they are? It yeah, is. The tether class, the tether class are people that are really FBA. Where you're trying to? No, they're not. You got yeah. people who sit up here on these city council um, boards, people in these political positions who are not from our lineage. People up there at the CDC, the Congressional Black Caucus who sit up here and do things to undermine us all day. And every time we say, hey, we need something for us specifically, they got every excuse in the world, but they do things for other groups. And I give you one main example, Kamala Dam Harris. 
that's a tether who undermines us. Don't tell us what's yeah. not happening in his right there face, bro. Can you, give, can you give me another name besides Kamala? Because I don't think she's black. Obama. Oh no, we we that's what we've been saying. She's we've been saying of our lineage. You can't put, a, you can't put they, Obama on this because he had a Kenyan uh, sperm donor father? Come on. Right. Can you give me a real name? That, I'm, I'm giving you big names. I'm talking about from top to bottom. You said it wasn't happening. I'm giving you big names. It's happening on a major level. But I'm saying you can't put Obama on us because he had a sperm donor father. Like, it had what nothing to do with us. Put on you. What do you mean? He's he's that's from he's your guy. That's your guy. He's not one of ours. But he wasn't raised with us, so you can't put him on us. Well, I'm just saying, can you give me a name so I can research it? He's from your lineage, sir. He's from your lineage, not ours. Can you give me a tether that's undermining you that's not Obama and Kamala? Uh, I'm naming them, and all you're doing is saying, okay, name some more. I'm not, I'm not going to sit up here and just give a nonstop list of damn tethers. You know they exist. I know they exist. I've already named a couple of them. And you're like, okay, name some more. <laughs> you already the damn point. The point has already been taken, sir. Um, also, right. Right. Y'all, how come you haven't been checking your tether class? Because now we're checking them. Well, my, my specific people don't undermine your people. But I'm who just talking in general. Who, who I'm Eric Trent. You, you where? I'm, I'm Eric Trent. Eritrean. Okay, yeah. Y'all got, listen, you had some chick from Africa. Some people are saying she's from East Africa. Everybody's been trying to pawn her off. She was on, she's out there in Ohio at a medical facility calling Foundation of Black Americans all types of N-words and slaves. And um, yeah, they're trying to get her license revoked out there. So yeah, she most likely she was Somalian. We don't we don't get down like that. Uh, sometimes, you know, sometimes you do. You, you got no. some who, who are real funny style sometimes. And again, some you of the we're cool with them. Nipsey was half Eritrean. That was my brother. My brother. Love them for life. Eritreans are actually cool. You understand? Most of them. We don't get into politics to undermine FBAs. We don't, we don't do none of that shit. Most of, a lot of Eritreans I've met are actually very cool. I've seen a few janky ones here and there. I've seen some janky ones. And um, there's a lot of East Africans that's being that's kind of janky and tribalistic because they're tribalistic over there. But it is what it is. How long you been over here? Were you born here? Um, I was I was born. I came here as a refugee, but I've been here over twenty years. Oh, okay. Well, you need to be thanking FBA shit because shit, that refugee thing, man. You know, we were sitting up here stomping to get brothers and sisters over here so we can help them. So yeah, don't we? We'll, we have a right to say, hey, we don't want some of these ungrateful tether class folks that's coming over here with you guys. We don't want them over here with that bullshit. We we just ain't on it no more. It, those days are over. We are delineating from all of that stuff. But um, anyway, man, thank you so much. Yeah, right, thank you. yeah, we're delineating, man. I'm, I ain't got no bones about that. I was I saw some stuff up there in New York. It, 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 New York is tether central. When you listen, whenever you see a lot of crimes in New York, damn near ninety percent of the time is tethers doing it. They, they've been doing these weird ass crimes up there. And then what happens is they get thrown under the umbrella of black. And then we have to absorb that. I'm like, no, anytime they do a crime, we start finding out. We look at them last names. We do research on them. And like, ah, there it is. He ain't one of us. He is not one of us. Okay? And that's been happening for a long time. Family. We're just now noticing it. But a lot of these weird crimes, a lot of this ain't us. It ain't been us doing it. But we get the blame. You know, the, the bag is thrown in our lap and then we have to look around and take responsibility for some shit that we, as a lineage, weren't even engaging in. And then people turn around. What's wrong with the black community? Oh, the black community is so dysfunctional. They just arrested a bunch of tethers, some drill rappers up there now, Ghanaian, up there in New York, a whole bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, I'm dying. Got no problem delineating because everybody else delineates. They don't want, they don't want negativity put on their lineage. I don't want it put on ours. 
those days are over where people can do negative things and then you go hide up under blackness. People use blackness as their personal little garbage pail. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. Who's foundational black American and who's not? See, that's why they don't like us using that term. Because, see, when we start claiming our foundational black American lineage, you don't have us to use as a garbage can no more. You can't dump your trash on us. Us circling our lineage, we're removing trash. You see, we're cleaning up our lineage. That's the first step to empowerment, getting all the trash about your damn lineage and all these people trying to fake and cosplay. And that includes Kamala damn Harris. That includes y'all girl Kamala Harris. Where are these Democratic shills? Have y'all noticed? I've never really met a super duper Kamala supporter in person. You notice you don't see Kamala supporters in person. And they never call up. You never see them in person and they never call up. They never call up to explain their position. The Kamala supporters are like, where's Waldo? Where's a Kamala supporter? You're never around. You never call up. Now, once we're done with our broadcast, you all, you stay in the comment section. So that must means that they're like, there's about four people with about 20 different accounts. That's what that means. There's about three or four Democratic shields who are paid by the Democrats who got about 20 different accounts where they log in and out of. Because you're never seen in person and y'all never call up. I would love to hear somebody who's a Kamala supporter call up and give your position. And I'm not talking about somebody who's a Democratic shill. You have people who are working directly with the DNC who call up. And, those, and the fact that they got to pay you to regurgitate the talking points from the DNC, that says a lot. Let's get... um. T. Frazier in the building. T. Frazier, where you at? T. Frazier, where you at, player? Hey, what's going on, my brother? I'm good. T, how are you, sir? Man, I'm good. I'm good. I, I actually just requested when I heard you say that, man. So down here where I am, I see him in person. I see Kamala. I see him repping hard down here. And I think it's suddenly stemming from when uh we had Megan Thee Stallion go up and do the performance and whatnot and kind of, you know, jump on the bandwagon. And, uh, man, I just think it's it's sad, man, for our communities, man. We constantly, you know, letting this narrative go out that all you got to do is sing, dance, juggle, and hide in front of the cameras, and then you got us. You know what I mean? Or yeah. throw out a couple of popular slang terms from the rap songs or whatnot, and then you got us. You know, nobody's paying attention to her lack of any policy at all. You know what I mean, and it's it's kind of sad, man. I'm, uh, I really appreciate your platform. I, to the point now, I started looking forward to it. I'm down here in H Town, man, in Houston, yes, and uh, um, I was trying to see to uh, how could I take a stance. I'm kind of popular down here, I would say, but uh, it seems like now you go against Kamala, the whole city against you. You know what I mean? Because now that after that performance, you got the mayor and different people. You know, it's a money plot. You know. They want yeah. to attach to the money that's coming, that's that's in the city or whatnot. So they gone back, whatever. So I'm looking at it now to where it seemed like the entire city then went Democrat on us, and you know, you know, she black all of a sudden, and everybody rapping for us. So I'm seeing it every day, and it's just it's a sad damn case, man. I I wish, uh, you know. If there was a way you could come and do uh speakings down here. I don't think I've ever I'm just I'm new to all this. I'm just finding out I'm a FBA. I didn't even I had to look it up and start kind of researching you to figure out, you know, I just was like, okay, blacks against Africans. You know what I mean? It's entertaining, but I'm just figuring out the, the point. And uh, uh I'm a big supporter, man, big fan of what everything you're doing. And uh just keep it up, man. When you get a chance, come down here to H Town, man. Absolutely. And I've done several lectures down there in Houston, man. I absolutely love Houston. Um, you know, a lot of people from California moving out there to Houston and Dallas and places like that. But, um, yeah, man, look, there's a lot of people who are afraid of power. 
there's a lot of people in our community that's afraid of power and they're on that democratic plantation for real. That democrat plantation is real. And when they sit up here and have people twerking and throwing catfish nuggets at people and when when a politician sits up here and tells black people what they ain't going to do for you and you still support that, you are dumb as damn hell. Let's keep it a bean. Kamala Harris sat up here straight up and down with her full chest said what she ain't going to do for black people. She ain't going to do nothing that's only going to benefit black people. And she said it with her chest. The level of disrespect, she would never in a million years say that to another group and then expect that group to support her. But low self-esteem sambos will sit up here and go along with the program because the, the white Democrats didn't scare you saying, well, the only racist is Trump. The only time they'll bring up racism is if they bring up Trump and they're scaring people with Trump. And I'm not, not going to go for scare tactics. I'm not going to go for that. All right, let's get Sammy. Let's get Sammy in the building. Sammy, what's up, Sammy? Uh, Sammy, then we get her smoke a lot. Sammy, where you at, man? Uh, good evening, uh, Tariq. Thank you for having me up today. I'm in uh, Illinois, uh, in the Chicagoland area. Um, just wanted to say, uh, as a foundational uh, white American, I love uh, what you've been doing with the FBA. No, no, no. Where did where are you foundational to? What did you found? What did you found? Uh, well, no. I mean, you know, I'm happy to be corrected, but uh, you know, I was uh, my my family came over like ten years after the Mayflower. Really? Yeah. From England? Your family's from England? Yeah, from England. I don't believe that. I don't believe that worth a damn. Uh, you you sound... Uh, uh, I, 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 I kind of hear a little Middle Eastern thing going. <clears throat> That's because I was actually... My, my family moved me over to the Middle East when I was six years old. So, Right. right. Hey, sir, I, I, I can hear camel hooves in the back. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I hear a Middle Eastern thing. You didn't come over after no damn Mayflower. But what else? What's on your mind? Well, I, I did want to say, uh, you know, uh, I, I I definitely agree with uh, what, what you've been uh, saying about uh, Kamala Harris. And, uh, you know, a lot of these people who uh, really don't have the interests of uh, real Americans in mind, especially uh, foundational black Americans like yourself. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's uh it's unfortunate that there there are people who get fooled into into believing like uh these sorts of things about uh, certain politicians and, and and uh all that. So I've been a I've been a big fan of uh you know what you have been doing with the with the FBA movement here in the in the states. There you go, man. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It was funny. A lot of <clears throat> I was out with the kids again. We were um I'm staying down in Orange County at a little children's play place. And a lot of Hispanics recognize me. That's interesting. A lot of Hispanics, hey, Tariq, I'm a big fan. Interesting. Very interesting. Now, this guy, he kind of sounds Hispanic on the phone. But very interesting. I have a very diverse base of people. Let's get um, Sir Smoke a lot. You good? Oh, yeah. What's going on, Tyreek? I'm good, Smoke. What's going on with you, brother? Oh, I'm good, man. My little brother and my uncle put me up on Game About You about a month ago, and I've been rocking with you ever since. Love it. Love it, man. Where your family from? Oh, we from California. There you we, go. Yeah. But what kills me about these Kamala supporters is all she had to do was take a, some hot sauce out of her purse and pour it on some food, and all of a sudden... She's for the black people, and to me, that's how you think of us. That's what you think about yeah. a black. That's all, that's all it takes for you to get a black vote is to pull some hot sauce out your purse. And she always, she's so proud of her Asian heritage. She's so proud of that. But when it comes to us, 
Oh, I'm not doing nothing for the black. We're doing this for the black community. It's doing something for the whole country. Yeah, yeah, man. And the, just the, the level of disrespect and also what she's doing with the Freedmen's um, um, Bank with that legacy, tethering other people onto it. Also, that whole thing where the Democrats are now trying to brag about this whole th- And I told y'all they were going to do this. The, giving the, the farmers some money. The black farmers had filed a lawsuit. And this lawsuit has been kind of stewing for years. This lawsuit has been around for years. So they finally said they're going to pay this lawsuit out, but they're not going to pay it out unless they include, quote unquote, minorities. So they've undermined the whole lawsuit. This whole thing where black folks, we have to be the sacrificial lambs. We have to suffer and we have to be degraded and we have to go through all of these adversities. So when it's time to correct it, everybody else stands up with their damn plate out. That's not justice to me. That's more exploitation. That's not a flex whatsoever. That minority thing undermines us all the time. Mr. Tickles, hop on, Mr. Tickles. Hey, Tariq, man, why don't you want to party with me for your birthday, man? Oh, no, 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 no diddy. No diddy. No, I like a variety of niggas around me, you know what I'm saying? Okay, well, look, we got Dr. Davinsky here. There's a, a, a white man down here. He's giving the thumbs down, but he can use that thumb in your bussy if you need him to. He's very flexible about the things he's into. But thank you, Mr. Tickles. All right. <sighs> Let's get Dr. Davinsky in here. Let's hear a white supremacist perspective. Let's hear from our fellow white supremacists. What's up, Dr. Davinsky? How are you? How you been, man? I ain't talked to you in a minute. Yeah, what's up, Brother Tariq? How you doing? I'm good, man. What's going on down under? It's been a while. Um, so a couple of things. Uh, just quickly, you know you have a slave owner name. Why? Do, it's not a very FBA name, Tariq Nasheed. Where, where's your family from? I hear you smacking down your lips. You having some hummus? What's going on with that? Uh, no, no, no. Just your mama's white titty. Just tasting <laughs> that. Tasting <laughs> Tasting that carnation milk on them titties, but that's all it is. What, what, what's Do you happening? believe? Well, you're I'm, I'm, be- I'm chilling in Thailand. Uh, I invited my parents over. We're having a good time. Showing my girlfriend with me too. Uh, hey, hey a, family, a family that tricks together sticks together. But go ahead. Yeah, no, so we're just having a good time down here. Went for a swim. Um, but do you believe race is a social construct? Um, yeah. Yeah, it is. So can it's, I? So so it's kind of like gender. So you would say that. What's your feelings on say transgenderism? Do you think that there's a distinction between uh, biological sex no, and no, gender? No, like, no, 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 there's a there's a two genders, man. There's only two damn genders, right? There's a, a cooch and a, a penis. Yeah, there's there's two, one two. That's it. But do you think that say like a trans woman? Um, do they exist like uh, as a as a social construct? Do, no, does it trend? No, 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 okay. no. That, that's a social. That's some shit that uh, your white supremacist brethren made up, man. No, that's twin spirit. That comes from merciless people, actually. And also, no. there was a lot of non-binary West Africans, actually. So when when the Europeans went there, you guys were having lots of gay no, sex. No, no, no. no. Yeah. That, stuff, that stuff was introduced when. The Arabs went over there. They started buck breaking people. The um, the Romans, the Greeks, Alexander the Great. He was a big old freak. He had a hankering <laughs> Bucci cat. So y'all been having a hankering for the Bucci cat for a long time, brother. Go look at the movie Buck Breaking. It breaks y'all history down. Man. Yeah, well, I was talking to FBA Trey, and he's waiting for part two because he loved that. He, he was jerking his dick off that whole movie. Hey, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth, Dr. Davinsky. You got to know you that you grew up in a Thai whorehouse, but you got to have some decorum, sir. You got to have some he, decorum. He was, he was masturbating. All right. Okay, there you go. Let's get some more people in here. That filthy white supremacist language, we don't want that, sir. That's not what we do here. You got to have decorum. You know, I have young people listening. You know, I got my young folks here. I want them to be able to to hear some some clean material. You know, not too, too filthy. We don't want it too filthy. Sometimes we can get a little raunchy, but no. We don't want degenerate white supremacists in here. All right. 
let's get um so let's get merciless merciless the many people believe you're a five dollar indian merciless <laughs> it's been a while Tariq. it's how been a been? while how you been man what's going on with you not much in arizona now uh apache what wrestling. you doing in, what, what you doing in arizona now um helping the apache tribe with uh some stuff uh, okay so that's about all I can get into as far as that. But um, okay. in regards to what D Dr. Davinsky says, uh, I disavow everything he said regarding race being a social construct, uh, the transgender thing, and it coming from my people. Like, yeah, we do have a lot of that, but that is not us. <laughs> like, it's right. coming from us. <laughs> right. Um, uh, what was I gonna say? Oh, what I meant to ask is where exactly can somebody see uh, the Buck Breaking movie? Because I heard about it being, you know, being a popular yeah, documentary. Actually, you can see it on Amazon. It's streaming on Amazon. You can see it on our streaming site. We got a streaming site called FBA Stream, or you can go to Amazon. Amazon is actually streaming on Amazon. Let me take a look. That streaming the movie American Maroon that's streaming on um Amazon too, so let me that look one's on. about the Haitian Revolution, right? No, no, no. Um, that's eight oh. four, but um, yeah, Buck Breaking. It's um, yep, on Prime Video, and yeah, you can get it right now on Prime Video on Amazon. Phenomenal movie, American Maroon. It's about the Maroons that were here in the United States. So, um, Hidden Colors is streaming on there. Um, American Maroon, Hidden Colors. So there's some good stuff on there. So yeah, check that out, man. And pretty soon, um, I think we'll get microphone check streaming on there. It's it's back on the new Blu-ray is out on um, microphone check. The uncolonized version. You guys can get that on um, Amazon. The official release date for the new DVD or Blu-ray. That's tomorrow. And also, you can um, go to microphonecheck.com for more information on that. Let's get the cigars. The cigars. Tariq, what's up, man? What's up, brother? How are you, sir? Bro, you know how long? I've been following you so long, man. I don't think people realize that you've been talking about the, the lot of game. Like the, You remember that lecture you did about the... Um, the Black Blue Vein Society and Black Secret Societies, man. I got okay. all that stuff, man. People need to go, they need to go get that stuff, man, because you've been hitting on this stuff for damn near 20 years, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I used to do them as pay-per-view specials. That's, th those are the ones I got, man. I just want to tell you, man, bro, I, I appreciate you so much, man. That, 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 I, you taught me the game on that, man. That's what helped open my eyes to like the Black Bourgeoisie, which you've been, you've been talking about. That ain't even nothing new, man. Yeah, but man, just keep keep going, man. I appreciate you, man. Thank you so much, brother. Appreciate that. All right. Yes, indeed. Man, we got a lot of folks in here, man. We're getting close to a thousand people in the middle of the night up in here. And again, I'm going to do my regular broadcast tomorrow. Didn't get a chance to do it today, and haven't done a lot of um. Twitter spaces because I've just been doing the weekend. I've been doing the thing with the family for this whole weekend because my my boys are going back to school tomorrow. So I wanted to get a whole bunch of stuff in with the family before they went back to school. So we just been doing the whole family thing. You gotta spend time with your family. That's very important. Spending time with your family is extremely important. I've been ripping and running all over this country for the last three or four months promoting movies and lectures and rallies. So it was very important for me to just really, really spend time with the family and um, get that popping because I'm going to be back out here in these streets because we got a lot of work to do. I got so much stuff going on. I got a new book that I'm working on because a lot of people have been asking me to really go in depth about the Majora spirit and really a lot of people have been wanting me to write a book on that. So I'm working on that. That's going to be my next book project. Also, we got a song parody album. People like the Musty Tether song. Do y'all know we got a whole bunch of other songs that's better than that? Oh, we got a bunch of songs. Um, I need y'all to help me come up with the, the name of the album. 
We got a bunch of songs. We're gonna have um um the government. That song is gonna be on there. Um, we got a song called Cake Soap Love. Um all of these songs going in on the tethers. We we got them. Um Oh, we got them. We got a song called Crooked Wig. We got a, we got a bunch of songs that's funny. And they're jamming. <clears throat> I need some names. Throw some name ideas for the album. Um, but that's going to be out in a couple of weeks under my group um, Flextro. Like retro because it has a, like we got a lot of retro vibes. <clears throat> so the Flextro um, album, that's going to be coming soon. That's going to be in a couple of weeks, actually. So we got some some songs that we can light these tethers up with. Um, yeah, my favorite is um, Cry To You Niggas. There's a song about how they be crying. We got a little Afrobeat song called Cry To You Niggas. And it's tight. It's, we got some tight stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. Um, let's get a couple of more calls in here. <clears throat> we won't be on too, too long. A couple of more calls in here. Um, but yeah, the song Musty Tethers, people really like that song. That's like a song that you can bop at a club. That's like a song, the Musty Tethers song. That, that shit slaps. You can rock that at the club and really get it popping. Um, let's get um, who we got. Oh, okay, who we got? Who we got? Let's get um, all right, let's get Trader Joe. Trader Joe in the building, Mr. Trader Joe in the building. Yo, what's going on, Flex? What's going on, Trader Joe? How are you, bro? Uh, I can't complain, man. Speaking of the book, man, I just um, I just got your other book, man. Uh, Foundation of Race Beater just came oh, good. in the mail. Oh, cool. Yeah, My just man. came in the mail the other day, man. I'm about to dive in and you know, check it out. Um, but I wanted to get your thoughts, man. On uh, uh, like for us, foundational Black Americans, man. Like us starting our own political party, cause like. I'm looking at all this foolery that's going on with the Republican and especially the Democratic Party. It's like, I don't know, man. I think, I think you know, we should just, like, form our own party and just, like, have them, you know, bow to our demands. Like, what, what you, you know, what's your thoughts on it? <clears throat> we can. I mean, yeah, that's, that's an option. Or we can just get on code with whatever party we get into because it's all about getting on code. That's the name of the game. And we got to be real. We got to want power. There's a lot of folks out here who don't want no damn power. They'll talk a good game up until a point. You understand? We got to be real. People will talk a good game. And they'll talk about empowerment just so they can get a good job position, just so they can get a promotion, just so they can get a quick bag and then they're going back into their comfort zone just so they can get some interracial sex and then they go back to their comfort zone. See, people talk a good game up into a point. See, power is something that you do all the time. And sometimes when you are a black person vying for power, you'll find yourself by yourself. You see, sometimes you look around and you're like, oh, damn, I'm the only one here. Because a lot of folks are afraid of real power. A lot of people in our society, they like to be in the childlike position where they let white mommy and white daddy handle everything. You did? <clears throat> Some people like that. And they don't want to really step it up and really network with other black folks and build real power where you're networking with people and bouncing ideas off of each other, utilizing the services of each other as black people. See, we used to do that. That's why we had, during the Jim Crow, we had more things. We had more industries that we controlled. And once the integration thing started to happen, one of the, the requirements was for us to give up 
some of our entities and industries that were sustaining us. And we started falling off because we didn't have those backup industries. We didn't have all that stuff where people are piled up in the projects. And then we didn't have all that. You think? We, we had backup industries where we could hire each other and look out for each other and work for each other. We, we had that stuff. What happened to Flacco? Flacco, I'll let you up and you bounce. Where you at, Flacco? Hop on real quick, Flacco. Did you um did you hit the button by mistake, Flacco? What happened to you? Hop on in here, brother. Yo, yo, Tariq, man. How you doing, Flacco? Where you been, bro? Man, hey, listen, I was enjoying the conversation, man. And then I seen um how like a tether joined and was acting like like uh and he was FBA. That last caller was not FBA, man. That, <laughs> Sorry. Which one? Which one? Uh, and he asked about like starting like y'all own party. Yeah, yeah, man. That nigga was no, <laughs> no, 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 no FBA. He, Sorry. He, he's not. But do you know him? Did you know him? Nah, man, bro. You can tell like by like by like his accent. I I really wasn't. I I couldn't tell. <laughs> Man, man, hey, here, here. Also, too, but listen to your listen, your three. Yo, I need to be on the album, man. Oh, yo, <laughs> <laughs> come on, listen, man. I need to be on at least one Afro Beast track. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you sing? Can you rap? What do you want to do on the track? Hey, listen, I, I can't sing or rap, Tyreek. But listen, listen, right, 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 right. Uh, but look, I can click though, my nigga. <laughs> so, <laughs> let's do it man <laughs> so you want to provide the clicks <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? we can do a track man I, right, for me I, i'm gonna hit you man all right man we'll, we'll talk uh, what we can do we can have you provide some igusi soup sounds <laughs> <laughs> uh, i don't really need no clicks and pops in the in the song uh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Um, yo, hot boy Cliff. What's up, brother? What's going on, Tariq? Good morning. Good morning, brother. What, now, where are you in the UK? No, nah, I'm not in the UK at all. I'm in Miami. Oh, there you go. All right, what's what's going on with you, hot boy? Just curious. Um, you don't think, uh, as far as reparations go, you don't think the fact that um, the Atlantic slave trade got... Africans and drop them off in the Caribbean and then in America, you don't think that gives the Caribbeans a claim to reparations as well? Hell no. No, 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 because we have two distinct cultures, lineages, and two col colonial powers that had us enslaved. You guys had Britain on your backs. We had Britain on our backs for a minute and then the um, white supremacists in the United States um, put their constitution on us and kept us enslaved. So we're dealing with the U.S. government now. So yeah, the whole we all were in the Caribbean and this and that. We have different cultures. Um, we have an ethnogenesis and we are a unique ethnic group. Now, what part of the Caribbean is your family from? Either Jamaican or Haiti, right? Well, I am Jamaican American. There's no... Uh... There's no question about it, but that's the thing I'm saying. Um, you say that you're uh, different uh, lineage-wise, right? But, uh, and that uh, the Caribbean people need to talk with which country? Britain. We need um, to talk Britain, with Britain. Britain, Spain, and France. That's what Caricom. You got. To, you already got Caricom. Yeah, but like we can also we also have a claim against the American white supremacy, and we have a claim in the Mid Atlantic uh, slave trade. That's what I'm saying. What's your, you know what's, what's, saying? Your, what's your claim against the U.S. government? Well, systemic white supremacy oppressed me personally. I'm speaking for myself. Systemic white supremacy oppressed me because I'm black, not because my lineage is Jamaican or some unknown. 
other that uh, the FBAs are relying on? Because y'all are saying in some respects that y'all were here even before the Native Americans and that y'all are the only ones worthy of being referred to as Black when the term Black predates America and was used in ancient Egypt. So y'all are, are just being selfish and I'm just being no, honest. I, well, there, there's some people who make the argument. I just say who's a foundational Black American and who's not. So I stick to that. So um, now you, sir, you said you're Jamaican American, but you're not a foundational black American. So we have different lineages. Now, if you, some other people want to argue with you about um, who can only be constituted as black, well, you need to have that, that conversation with them. But do you think because you dealt with systematic white supremacy that you're entitled to reparations? <laughs> Absolutely, positively, yes, Tariq. That is my underlying cause. Yes, oh, I think okay. I'm entitled to some reparations for my suffering. Okay, so the question would be, why wouldn't you just go back home? Because you're Jamaican. And why well, did your family come here? If you, if it was so bad, that's, that's the justification that they're going to use to say, hey, um, if it was so bad, why'd you come? Well, um... I I was brought here under with the I came here with the same goals as everyone else to make a better life, but I was discriminated. Right, right. So you can't say you're oppressed, but you're making a better life. Sir, sir, sir let me life. let me finish my statement, please. All right. See? But uh it was it was false advertising. I was discriminated against, predicated on the color of my skin. And I should be repaired for that because it is a better life over here if you're Mexican or Hispanic or Cuban. But, but no, when you're black, we gotta deal with niggas like you who are anti No, no, no. Calm down, because now you're being sassy. No, because sir, if it was so bad, you would have turned back around and went back into your Jamaican shanty town and you didn't. So just coming here was your reparations, right? Hell no. Are you stupid? Just um, coming here was... Sir, coming here is a form of reparations. And not only that, you didn't even earn it. You understand? You got unearned benefits. You came here and got some shit that you didn't even deserve. You didn't even work for. You came here and ate off foundational black Americans. And then look how disrespectful you are. You're a musty, disrespectful tether on top of that. You see? And then you get mad when we delineate. Why shouldn't we delineate from musty tethers like yourself, sir? Hmm? Come on, man. Talk to me. Come well, on. you're well, you're free to delineate. You should delineate away. But um another point is when you delineate, don't forget that it was a Caribbean man that wrote the black national anthem and Caribbeans and ooh, other ooh. Black, Ooh. I don't fucking know his name. I don't care. Okay, but even you don't give a damn, okay? You don't even give a damn who he is. So that shows how significant he is, all right? That shows how significant he is. You don't even remember his name. You don't give a damn about some black national anthem? What are you talking about? You talking about lift every voice and sing? What? That's the the so called black national anthem. So what are you talking about? You understand? You, you tell what, I'm, what I'm talking about is is if is that what you're talking about? The lift every voice and sing? Yeah, yes, that's what I'm talking about. A Jamaican, a, a Caribbean, a Caribbean. A Caribbean. Uh, but, I, about that i haven't heard that it sounds well, like look a into it look into it look into it but my point is my point is that um when you subtract what the caribbeans and international black people have contributed to america and black america in many ways like uh, what? oh i gotta uh, hear this oh i gotta hear this like what sir well before i get to that let me just no, say no, when no, you no, sub no, when you subtract no, that no, no get to it i gotta hear this I understand you want to you want to hear it from me, Tariq, but I'm not your damn secretary. Go look it but up for you yourself. It up. You Educate brought it yourself. up. You brought it up. Okay, well, I'll elaborate in a in a in a brief moment. But you, when you subtract, you, when you subtract, no, 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 no. What did they contract? Um, just get to it. You brought it up. I would love to hear this. What did y'all contribute? Damn near everything. Damn like near what? everything. Like 
we are all black, but I don't want to get sidetracked with that. I have a point that I'm I have a point that I'm trying to land, Tyreek. Because you said something and you can't even back it up. You have I can back it up. I can back it up. You Many of the things you say you can back up. You just have gay ass so cheerleaders supporting you. You just saying stuff. You can't even back it up. I can back up anything I say. You just have a lot of gay ass cheerleaders. Lie. You couldn't even elaborate on your own lie. Ain't that sad? Because I'm not gonna let you tell me what I should and shouldn't talk about and which points I shouldn't and shouldn't make. You're not Kamala. Just you just told a damn lie and then couldn't back your lie up, sir. Nobody contributed anything to us. You can't even contribute things to yourself. Look at the Olympics we just had. Terry, that dude in the Olympics was gay. You know that. Dude, look at the Olympics we just had, dude. Come on. Now, now, what what, what dude is gay? Who are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, uh, uh, like all FBAs are gay. Y'all have a definite. Oh, dude, we know what y'all got to do to get a green card. We know what y'all do. We know how y'all help people get their groove back. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now, some of these folks, man, did any West Africans win anything in the Olympics? Speaking of the Olympics, they ain't win nothing. No disrespect. They didn't win nothing. No, no disrespect, not at all. Not even, not even to FBAs. I just feel like that point has to be considered. Y'all try, y'all flexing like y'all contributed every friggin' thing to the black diaspora. And if you do the research, y'all contributed the vast minority to the black diaspora. Y'all love airbrush paintings, and airbrush was invented by a black man, and y'all telling niggas to swim back home and all types of shit. Y'all should have been telling yourselves that when y'all. I was getting sprayed with water hose and chewed up by dogs. Y'all. Oh, well, let me tell you something about the people getting sprayed with water hoses and chewed up by dogs. Those were children in Alabama. When you look at that footage, those were foundational Black American kids who the white supremacists had to put dogs and water hoses on them. And those Black kids still stood on business. They still didn't flee. They still fought back. They still put in work. And they still get the honor and respect that they're supposed to get. And that energy down in Alabama is still there. We're celebrating the one year anniversary of Fade in the Water, where foundational Black Americans still stood on business and whooped down on a bunch of white supremacists who tried to raise up on them. You could never, sir. But go ahead. Go ahead, sir. I respect it. Um, yeah, but I looked at that footage, and it, they weren't minors. They weren't children in any uh, or the anything like that. But, but the point is, no, the point yes, is, they is, they is that is down in Alabama, when they were putting those water hoses on those people, you look at that footage, those were children. Those were like 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 year old teenagers. These were high school and, and school age students, sir. Look at the footage again and look at those people. They were just well dressed. Back in those days, black children would dress in suits. They were just very well dressed, but they were children that those white supremacists were attacking. Our babies, our children, were going up against these demonic bastards. That's our spirit. We got a spirit of Majara, that's what I call it, Ooh. that a lot of people don't have. But go ahead, sir. Apparently that statement there struck a chord with you, but I saw that footage and it was grown ass niggas like you and Mark Carter getting sprayed because you wanted so bad to be with white people. You fought for integration and now you're talking about delineation from black people. Those folks getting hit with the water hoses, that's the reason why your ass was able to come over here. They were fighting for civil rights, not integration. They were fighting so that Black people could have the right to go wherever they needed to go and move freely in a country where we pay taxes to. That was the whole purpose. And right during that movement, the immigration movement, we start fighting and using that energy for that. That's when your musty family were able to get the flies flicked off of them long enough to flee over here, sir. So you're welcome. You understand? You're welcome.
Oh, no, nah, that's I, also that's what I'm saying. Like perception means a lot. And to a lot of people, you perceive yourself as helping other people out. You perceive yourself as helping the Caribbean out. But I don't think you helped out as much as you did. In fact, you're not helping now. You weren't helping then. I think it's all a delusion. You're, y'all are not better than any other black people in the world. And y'all are sadly mistaken. And this is not going to end well for you. Jealous. That's jealous talk. Why Why do you tethers got this thing? You FBAs think you are so better. We don't really go, on around, go around saying that. We don't go around saying yeah, that. Yeah, George Floyd is not better than me, dog. I don't think like that at all. And neither do many uh, black people around the world. We do not think you're, you think you're better than us. We don't think you're better than us at all. Um, But we don't go around saying that. And then and then you want to be technical. Yeah, we are exceptional because we didn't flee like you. And you have a complex about fleeing because you know that. I do not have a complex about fleeing. You actually did. No, no, no. no. You know, deep down, it's bitch made to flee from your homeland like that and run all over the place, begging and then pointing your finger, talking crap and being disrespectful and trying to crap on the people, the only folks who actually help your ass, and you were the minority or majority in your homeland, and Asians and Indians over there smacking you around and taking over everything. It feels real bitch made to go through that. So then y'all come over here and try to talk greasy to us as a way to project, sir. Ain't that right? That is not right. That is inaccurate. Um, a lot of uh, black oh, people in the diaspora fight for their freedoms and fight for their rights. People in uh, continent. Oh, you, you and your family, didn't you? You over here whining yeah, to us. You ain't over no, Jamaica. We go back to Jamaica all the time. In oh, Jamaica, stop. we just no, we like no, two hours. Don't. You don't, don't know what you're talking about, Tariq. You're just being racist. No, you're, you're not. You're racist. You're racist. You don't know what you're talking about. Stop lying. I'm sick of y'all lying. I go back to Jamaica all the time. No, you don't. No, y'all don't. You ex you escape your janky homelands. You escape, and you're grateful, and you never go back. You don't go back. You don't set foot on it. And in in fact, in some of these places, your parents threaten you by sending you back or saying they're going to send you back. If you don't get good grades, I'm going to send you back to Jamaica. Oh, please, Bamba Clad. Don't do it, Mama. Bamba Clad. I learned my lesson. Bamba, Bamba Clad. They threaten to send you back home so you can get some back. Okay. Well, that's not the case here. I mean, I go where I please, and, and I go where I you please, including Compton, uh, uh, Oblock. Uh, Atlanta, your hood. I go where I please, and the white man goes where they please and does as they please in your community. Y'all are a and bunch of coons. You love no, white. No, no, they do what they please in, in your homeland where you're the minor majority. It's a gazillion of you, and they got beaches your ass can't even go on in your own homeland. How you going to have every country has to pay taxes to go on the beach? We have to pay some type of money for maintenance, Tariq. Beaches in your own homeland that these white folks won't even let you go on. What kind of crap is that? Huh? Tariq, we have to pay taxes in America to use the toll. You can't get on the road without paying. And we can't get on our beaches without paying because that's the nature of tax and government, Tariq. Stop being that ignorant. Same thing. A, a beach ain't a toll. You understand? You walk on a beach. We can walk anywhere we want to walk out here. Then go walk on the highway then. Why the hell would we walk on a highway? And I can walk on a highway. I don't want to walk on a highway. That's dumb. You tethers be making well, these well, we'll drive on the highway. You tethers make these weird ass analogies that don't even make no sense to justify why you getting smacked around and punked out on your own homeland. You can't even walk on certain damn beaches because these white they folks. Pay a toll. There's a. Uh pay a toll, nothing. You're not allowed on it. You ain't going to pay no toll. They don't allow you on some of those beaches. Damn a toll. You're not allowed, sir. So you're, saying in, so you're saying in Jamaica, there's a beach where so black people just aren't allowed. The locals can't go. You can't walk well, on the beach. Well, guess what? The lo beaches that the locals can't, which is not true. It's a, it's a complete lie, but the beaches that the locals can't go to? 
term. They don't want to go to it, unlike the FBAs oh, who, want to do, who, who want to integrate with white people, who want to be everywhere white people it, are. Y'all are a bunch of coons. It, integrate, sir. We've been, sir. We've been to your homeland. We see y'all niggas running around the island with fat white women tourists. The bedwinches over there running up under Zaddy. The minute a Zaddy show up, them crooked wigs are running and flocking like fleas. Stop it, sir. We, we have a lot of we have a lot of tourists that we can. Yeah, yeah, y'all, y'all run up under tourists begging for for crumbs and spreading your booty cat wide open for them, sir. You ain't fooling nobody. We see you. You know we see you. The men and the women. We've been over there. We've seen y'all walking up and down the beaches with white mommy and white daddy. Hey, Tyreek. Um, <laughs> you know, um, let's change uh, the stuff because that's a, that's that touched the nerve, didn't it? Like we don't no, see. Not- I'd have been all over Jamaica, dude. I'd have been to damn near every crevice of Jamaica, sir. You're not gonna run that game on me, bro. <laughs> I just well, listen to shit. I'm not trying to run any game on you. I, you know, I'm apologizing that it seems that way. Truth to power. Let's be truth to power. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Well, let me ask you this. Did you know that FBA women are the number one consumers of Brazilian butt lifts? Ain't that some tether shit? Sir, y'all can't afford a damn butt lift. Y'all can barely afford cake soap. Okay, y'all running over there with that cheap cake soap, your skin looking crazy. You you got chocolate arms and vanilla faces. Y'all over there looking crazy. If you could afford it, you could, but you can't. So you're over there struggling with crooked wigs and cake soap. So stop trying to project junk on FBA women. Let's get EJ in here. EJ, hop in, sir. Hey, brother Tyreek, how you doing, player? I'm good. How you doing, brother? Yes, um, thank you for letting me come on, man. If you go to this Tedder's profile picture, he's dressed up like one of these, you know, Trump supporters looking like a minstrel show character. He's definitely getting his Sergio DeBedrack on, you know, tap dancing at the Apollo Theater. So, you know, he's looking real zesty and real fruity. Um, matter of fact, um, go get pistol with the side of your head with red stripe, nigga, and I will put and I will put it on the jumbotron for this loop for this loose lip bastard can shut the fuck up and be quiet. You talking about black Americans and you are looking like a minstrel show character with your slave master, your overseer, dressing it up like a skinny crackhead version of Donald Trump. So you don't need to be talking about nobody. As you can see on the Voltron screen, this loose lip pot smoking bastard up here talking crazy about foundation of black Americans, but he ain't even helping the uncle Jamaicans back in his homeland. Yeah, in this bitch ass rant, get smacked upside your head with a bong, nigga. You have enough nerve and enough sense to be talking crazy about foundational black Americans when you niggas got smoked in the damn Olympics. Y'all niggas was out there quitting. And salute to the uncle Jamaicans who went out there talking shit about other countries. They was out there bitching, crying, and complaining about the Jamaican government not even giving them the necessary benefits to be qualified in these certain Olympic games. How are you going to talk about foundational black Americans and we all don't even have the natural resources to compete in these certain categories in the damn Olympics? So get pistol whipped upside your head, nigga, and get smacked upside your head with a Bob Molly record. You don't need to be talking about nobody in foundational black America, let alone about anybody else in the entire world when the Chinese, the Indians, and everybody else who got two pistols upside your head, hitting you upside your head and making you bleed. So the moral of the story is, nigga, get bent over. We know what you had to do to get a green card and hashtag musty tether for number one on the billboard top 100. Thank you, Tyreek, for letting me on. Come on, bro. Thank you, brother. Yeah, well, he, he, the old boy was doing a lot of projection, and bro, he up here talking about we love white people. He up here with a white dude with a wig on, and the brother, um, what was his name? Hot boy, using our terms, by the way. And you look at him, he's all sloppy looking, and look at his knees, brother. Your knees look like they got an oil spill, got them rusty ass tether knees. Yeah, and then cats be getting mad like people can't see that you're a tether. We we okay. You yeah. cats like that they get mad because they don't blend in with us. A lot of these folks really think they be blending in. You don't blend in. We know. We know. We know you ain't one of us. 
We all black, though. Not not like you. Nigga, the only black is your knees. Your knees are black. Look at your knees, man. Go scrub your knees. A grown-ass man knees that damn rusty. You look like you a breakdancing coach with them damn knees. Were you a coach at the Olympics? Was that why y'all lost? With them damn knees. You've been doing knee spins, nigga. Them rusty-ass knees. Good freaking grief. Nigga, you got burnt bammy on your knees over there in Jamaica. You got the nerve to talk crap about foundational black Americans and our brothers and sisters who had to withstand the hose pipes and the dogs and still stood on some damn business and didn't flee, then hop on a damn raft floating somewhere. I wish a floating tether would. You know what? I think that might have to be a new song on the album, Floating Tether. <laughs> Hold on. Let me get my pen. Let me write some, some lyrics. I'm going to have to write a song about floating tethers. <laughs> floating up. Every time you turn around, some tether floating somewhere. They're all up there in the Mediterranean on inner tubes. Just, and then get somewhere and try to talk shit. Wet, musty, floating tethers talking shit. Good freaking grief. Oh, goodness. Anyway, let me get out of here, family. Should I get one more call? Hold on. Uh, we got a Nigerian brother. Let's get, uh, how to you pronounce your name? Yuchin? Let's get Yuchin. Let's get, I, I can't pronounce your name. What's how to pronounce your name, brother? Yuchin? Unmute your microphone, sir. Unmute your microphone. Uh, are you calling in between? DoorDash orders, sir. Yu Chin, whatever your name is. Yu Chinna. Unmute your microphone. All right. I don't think you want. Oh, no. I, the Gabriel, the Democratic Shield. I, I, I don't want to hear Democratic talking points tonight. I, I don't want to hear what the DNC has sent you down. I, I, I really don't want to hear the DNC talking points them bad faith ass arguments and talking points ijb what's happening hey what's up uh so are you like pro reparations yes absolutely yes and so you want money from all americans right the united states government so yeah. we want money from the united states government because that was the government that kept us enslaved and we couldn't get out of slavery because of the government. And they were the ones facilitating the generation of all of that. Money. That makes sense. Yeah. But they're giving all their money to uh, Ukraine and Israel right now. I know that, and they need to give that money to us. Right? I think that's just the wrong attitude. What, what, what's the right attitude? Uh, work, work for whatever you, your yeah. people didn't. Your people didn't do that. They hopped on a boat and got free stuff. Well, look, Irish were slaves too, but we don't go on. About no, they being weren't. Slaves. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. They were indentured servants, and they got paid. They got freedom dues, sir. They got. Yeah, I mean, like, like, why, why would anybody want to hang on to slavery? Sir, like, dude, sir, let it go. The, the, you know? No, 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 because Forget because why, your what? people got paid. Like you your won't get over it. Just get over it. You know. No, no, you're no, not no, a slave. No, no. Don't, don't troll. You. You're not going to turn because you know y'all try to troll your way out of it. No. See, when you start hitting them with facts, he he tries to troll himself out of it. That's what these white supremacists try to do. No, let's let's go back to the Irish. We're going to speak truth to power. We're not going to let you troll your way out of it. The Irish got something called freedom dues. They got land, money, and weapons, and these people. The Irish, many of them were prisoners over there in Europe, so they were they weren't worth shit anyway. And they sent the prisoners over here and chipped them off and got them paid. So it's not the same. But go ahead. Now, you're not going to troll now. If you're going to troll, that means you tapped out. Trolling means you tapped out. All right. I'm not trolling. I'm just yeah. yeah you're trying talking. to talk. You're trying to talk crazy. A lot of you anti-black people play that troll game. You don't. I'm anti-black all of a sudden. Okay. When, when you when you don't have any logic. 
Yeah, everybody who's white, anti-black, and a racist, and white supremacist. And I, and I don't believe you're Irish. You start, again, yeah, I kind of hear a Middle Eastern thing, like a Persian going on. So. Oh, yeah, Middle Eastern, okay. Yeah, I, I get a vibe like that. A lot of you guys don't want to be Anglos, but go ahead. Uh, no, I'm just, just getting your positions here, seeing if you're pro-reparations, and that's interesting. Uh, yes, I'm pro-reparations. Why are you so anti-reparations? <laughs> uh, because slavery is not just... You know, everybody at one time in history were slaves. Don't give a you know? Okay, then they go have to. They're gonna have to holler at the government that had them enslaved. You were never a slave, though, were you? Uh, but I'm a descendant of them, and we were never yeah. paid and compensated. And the That's debt, just, has, yeah. and the debt has it's been. It's like sitting. welfare, you know. You want no, welfare no, no, or what? Welfare, you know? no, no, no. That's what you guys get. Welfare is what yeah, you got. Okay. Other benefits, no. I just we think it's no, no, no. No, things from slavery is still passed down to us, sir. The education gap, that came from slavery. That was passed down to us. That education gap was passed down. It was illegal for us to read in slavery. That education gap was passed down. Some of the health disparities were, were passed down. That high blood pressure and hypertension and all of that, because we had to eat certain foods that these white supremacists forced us to eat. So that created genetic issues that were passed down that we still suffer from. So yes, the remnants and the shrapnel from slavery is still here and we still need to be compensated, sir. Does that make sense? Hop on, sir. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think that makes sense. Right, that's just I'm white not saying so, and that's not going to work. We're not going with our face so thing. Justice has to be served, and we're not gonna we're not gonna move that needle until we get some justice, right? I mean, I, you just want money, right? You want more government? You damn right, I do. I want twenty. Aren't trillion, you successful? Look, twenty trillion. Yeah, yes, I am. But I want yeah, all. You of don't my need any to, money. You don't need. I need welfare. all of my. Then that's the difference between me and a lot of other people. It's not about me. I you want, want it all, for your brothers, right? You want it for your I brothers. want all of my people to be successful, right. yes. And your people are yes. who? Who are your people? Foundational black Americans, sir. Okay. I want all of them to be successful. It ain't about me. Yes, I'm relatively successful. What about okay. them? What about them? And so you think you, you can throw money at, let's say, a pro, like a person or, or an issue and, and it gets solved? Um, yeah, it'll make it better because most of our issues are based on economic deprivation. Isn't that so, what, isn't that what welfare is for though? No. Welfare is for white people. Oh, okay. All That's right. what white people, okay. it was white people, white people that are the, the white supremacy is a welfare system. Okay. Within. So That's welfare is want. not enough. You you mean, white want, supremacy is want. welfare. Okay. You get a bunch of unearned benefits based on skin color that's what that's a form of welfare sir white supremacy is a welfare system all right well just just checking your points here that's all there you go all right thank you so much sir thank you all right yeah i don't give a damn about these white supremacists being mad we're owed something and then these tired talking points where there was everybody had slavery don't give a damn let them deal with their enslavers we're dealing with ours what kind of garbage ass argument is that yeah. What that have to do with the United States? We're talking about the U.S. government. Some of these other societies that they're talking about, they don't even exist. That's just a deflection. The government who had us enslaved is still here. Same constitution and everything. And that's the government we're hollering at. The U.S. government. But there's slavery in Africa. Let them deal with it. They ain't got nothing to do with us. There's slavery in the Middle East. Let them deal with it. It ain't got nothing to do with us. What about them? What about my ass? What about my money? Well, you're successful. Don't matter. I want everybody to be successful who's foundation of black American. I'm not one of these democratic shills. See, that's the thing. You know, uh, let me tell y'all something. Black folks, a lot of people think that... Black folks, if they get any type of relative success, you're supposed to shut the hell up and be grateful. That's the mindset that they have with a lot of black entertainers, black athletes, black um, Hollywood people. 
You're supposed to shut up and be grateful. Don't rock the boat. You're successful. So shut up. And don't you be politically active as a black person. Now, white people, you can be politically active no matter how successful you are. The um, um, Brad Pitts and whoever, all of these people, George Clooney's, all of these people, they flex their political power all day. Nobody says, hey, you're already successful. No, they use their success to politically motivate other policies. When we do it, oh, you shut up and be grateful. Oh, what? don't worry about all those other blacks. And the problem is so many black people in the industry have that mindset where, damn you all, and it's all about them. They think all of us are like that. I'm not like that. Yes, there are a lot of Negroes like that in the entertainment industry. They don't really say anything about issues that's going to empower the black masses. All they do is sit up here and we see it. We see these Democratic shills, these Hollywood entertainers and actors and singers and rappers just caping for the Democrats just so they can get invited to the little White House correspondent dinners or so they, they can get some little nigga trinkets. I'm cool on that. That ain't my bag at all. I'm all about, man, look, what about everybody else? What about people from the lineage? They deserve what they're supposed to get. Yeah? All right, should I get somebody else on here? What should I do? What's up, Sister Wani? I see Wani down there. Um, let me see who we got. Let me get one more. One more. Let's get genius in here. Let's get genius in the building. Genius, what's up, brother? Genius, hop on, bro. Genius. All right. I, I hate when people look. Raise your hand only if you want to get on. I hate when people flow up the vibe, slow up the vibe of the show in live space when they request to get on and don't say nothing. All right. Let's get on. Um, raise your hand if you're ready right now. Let's try that. If you're ready right now, raise your hand. I got to get some flea stuff for my damn dogs, man. My dogs, we had them at a dog kennel, a little doggy daycare, and your ass got fleas. Yeah, well, yeah, somebody house here, yeah, but they got fleas over there. Yeah, the honey was on me and fleas was all popping on me. Yeah. All right. Let me see. Who? Let me see. Where we at? Where we at? Trying to see where everybody is. Let me see. Let it be known. Let's get let it be known. Mr. Let it be known. Hop on, brother. Hey, it's Dawn. It's a lady. Hey, Tariq. Congratulations on the um, Ann Coulter shout out. Um, congratulations on microphone check. Hope you get that yes, back sir. out. I Thank you, beloved. Hey, 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 hey. Um, and I want to push the uh, petition. We're trying to get the designation for um, Descendants of U.S. Slavery. It's pinned in my um, profile. Ms. Woney has been uh, helping push this out there. So the uh, deadline is tomorrow by noon. Let's get to 500 signatures, y'all. And uh, Tariq, we're so proud of you. Keep on, keep it on. I'm glad Thank I got you. on the stage. Thank you, dear. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, there is something going on with um, some designation. I, I got to look into it. But yeah, I, I did read about that. I got to see what's going on with that. All right. Let me see. Uh, let me see. One more. Can I get one more? Can I get one more? I always say that. Then we end up here for hours. Let's get um, Munji. Let's get Munji in here. Munji. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, Munji. Hop in, Munji. Turn your microphone on. 
and I hope I'm pronouncing that name right. And Munji ain't saying nothing. All right. Let's get B in here. The Black Experience. What's up, B? B, what's up, B? Hello, B? Hello? What's up, B? How are you all right, Tariq? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. Um, yeah, yeah, I've been a fan of the show for a long time. A long oh. time, but I'm from the UK, so... I hear it in you. So you're from I the UK. Where's your, where's your family from? My family come from Jamaica. There you go. Yeah. Man. So what's on your mind? I just I thought I'd give you a shout and just say that we appreciate you from this side as well. And um, yes, indeed. I hope you guys. What's going on with the 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 racial tension that's going on over there? You know, have the white supremacists going around attacking brothers and sisters. So what's the vibe over there now? I think what happens is what happens in America gets projected to the rest of the world. So, for instance, you know, like with the issues that you guys have had with Trump and sort of the left and the right, it happens everywhere. And here we have a guy called Tommy Robinson. Yep. Who I've done more research on him recently because it's it's raised a lot of racial tension, even with what you would consider you'd call them tethers. But yeah. my family were immigrants, but with a few more generations in. No, but um, I'm not. Let's let's slow down on that because I, I I don't call immigrants tethers just to be calling them that. Usually yeah. the tethers are over here doing little weird stuff to us. Yes. So tethers are basically what people are doing. It's an it's an action that they're doing. So I wouldn't call them tethers over there because they haven't done anything to us. But go ahead. Well, they here they undermine people who have had to ignore racism pretty much our whole lives. Oh, you know okay. the. The double standard here is ridiculous. There's this guy called Tommy Robinson who had a, I looked up recently, had a hundred thousand pound course paid for him. And then he lost it because he had a fight with a police officer and went to prison for 12 months. And then he joined the BNP, which was a racist organization, then made EDL, another racist organization and levied that against the government. We've had, a conservative government for like 14 years but yeah. just recently we had a vote and we went into a labor government which is our left should we say um and it's just there's been a complete uproar around the trump protests but it's been a complete uproar around the trump sort of uh, the trump rallies and it okay let me let me land your plane brother but okay thank you so much and y'all be safe out there and just let me know what's going on out there. Jim, Jim, hop on, man. Yo, what's going on, Tariq? What's going on, Jim? Are you Somali? Yeah, man, I'm, I'm Somali, bro. Well, you, okay, you called before, right? No, 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 no. This is my first oh. time. Yeah. Oh. Now, Tariq, okay. now I was going to ask you, bro, Um, how much how much money we took for the reparations, man? Um, 20 trillion. That's the start it off. Shit, man. I might, I might have to fill out that I'm an FBA, man. I'm going to have to go to Turkey. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Y'all not about to go to Dubai and get them hairlines. No, no, no. no. The Turkey, man. We got to go to Turkey. You went to Turkey. Come on, man. Like, no, yeah, I went to Turkey. Have people I, didn't, to... I didn't get a hairline reduction. I don't I know, got... man. There was, a, there was a picture where you were sitting down on a, on a seat. It, it looked like you had some janky hairlines, man. Yeah, and anytime I have a janky hair, <laughs> usually it's one of you tethers that then gave me a janky haircut. <laughs> Every single time. Every, if you see Every me with a thing, and I've had time. some janky haircuts, it's the yeah. hands of a tether. So Come that's why. On. Yeah, well, we try to, we try to, we, we're brothers, man. Well, no, not with them janky hairlines. <laughs> um, but my old jokes aside, though, man, uh, so tonight, um, my aunt, she went to Kroger, you know what I'm saying? Going went uh, grocery shopping. Are you guys in Atlanta? Out. No, 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 uh, Ohio. So she oh, okay. came out, and her like her car was gone, man. But they found it. I guess who were the perpetrators, man? Who who were the perpetrators? They they had good hairline. That's it. 
That's I'm going. That's what, that's what I'm gonna say. They had good hairline. You know I, don't, I don't want to be racist and shit, but you know what I'm saying. So, so you saying that some some FBA brothers stole your aunt's car? I don't know if it was FBA man, but they. I don't believe we found we found we found some Popeyes. We found some Popeyes in that. Man. No, no, no. Ain't it no FBA. Listen, ain't no FBA stealing no Nissan Altima used for Uber. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the. Uh, it ain't wasn't, nobody about to steal no Mustang. It was a Kia. I swear to God, it was a Kia though. It was a Kia Sportage. I don't believe that. I think it was I a must I'm not Nissan. kidding. I'm not it kidding. Was musty, it, was, it was a Kia. It was Sportage. a must Nissan Altima nah, with the Goosey Soup chains on the the glove compartment. <laughs> it was a Kia. It ain't no brothers man. stealing that. Ain't no brothers gonna steal that. Brother. Come on, man. Know. It was a Kia. It was a Kia boys, man. They got her, man. Oh no no no! I don't believe your aunt. But but uh, that that Ann Coulter man, that was a big shout out, man. Congrats. Yeah yeah yeah. A lot of people are recognizing our lineage. A lot of people are. And you know what's crazy? I, I think a few years ago, Ann Coulter she was on CNN. And she was like, "Our blacks are better than your blacks." I was like, "Fuck, man!" Shit. Lord. I, I'm Lord. not. I'm not kidding. I swear to God, look it up. Go to YouTube man. and type in Ann Coulter. Our blacks better than your blacks. I was like, mm. God, damn, man. I got to look at boy, Tariq, the shit. Damn. They, they, man. They got him. They got him. Man, man, man. But anyway, man, you be good, brother. Get All right, that bro. All right, bro. Yeah. All right, bro. All right. All right, right, right. Uh, y'all, y'all go to microphonecheck.com. Go to hiddenhistorymuseum.com. We're going to get an event going at the Hidden History Museum. A lot of people want us to do an event in and I'm back in town. I'm not going to be running around, ripping and running around the country like I was all summer. I was all over the place this summer. But um, yeah, we're going to do something at the event in a couple of weeks. Y'all got to come down to the museum. Got to vibe with the family. Y'all got to come on down. Um, and also, if, if you're in town, if you're in L.A., just come through Sunday through Saturday. I mean, Thursday through Saturday. We open on the weekends, Thursday through Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Y'all come on down. Come down and get some stuff and visit and make a contribution. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, but let me get up out of here, man. Um, Y'all go to my YouTube channel, Tariq Radio. I'm going to do my main show tomorrow because I didn't do my thing tonight because I was with the family. But um, go to my YouTube channel, Tariq Radio. Subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you will be notified when I'm on. And um, I'm about here, man.